Hey everyone, and welcome to the 18th episode of my Launchpad tutorial series. In this episode, we're going to be looking into exporting light effects from the MIDI clip editor into MIDI files and loading them into our chain. If you remember creating light shows as MIDI clips in the arrangement view, you will remember this powerful editor. Compared to making chain-based effects, this editor lets me have complete control over my light effects and I can generate them quickly and easily. However, it does not give me the possibility of playing my light effects live by pressing buttons. Today I'm going to show you how you can integrate these playable MIDI clips into your live performance. The Max for Live plugin that will allow us to do this is called the MIDI extension, made by Exige. You can download the MIDI extension from Launchpad Pro's website. Once you got that downloaded, go ahead and extract it into your user library. And now we can start using the two MIDI extension devices in our chains. When using the MIDI extension, you should always have the master device loaded as the first device in your chain. After that, you can add a MIDI effect track and start building your effects. To add an effect, put the MIDI extension device to a key of your choice. And now we are going to load this MIDI clip inside of the device over here. Due to some limitations on file paths, this MIDI clip cannot be saved wherever we want. There is a specific folder where it should be loaded from. This folder is located inside of the Ableton installation directory, more specifically the max resource. The easiest way to access it is to open up a run box and then get inside of the program data folder on your main drive. From here, navigate to Ableton, Live 10 Suite, Resources, and Max. Inside of this folder, you want to create a new folder and name it exactly MIDI X. And now you can pin that folder to Ableton Live's file browser for easy access at all times. Inside of this folder, I will create a new folder with the name of my project. Note that this folder name has some limitations on which characters can go there. Namely, you should not use the space character anywhere. And now we will export this MIDI effect inside of this folder here. Right click on your MIDI clip and select export MIDI clip. After you've navigated to the MIDI X folder, give a name to your MIDI clip and save it. Your MIDI clip now appears under the file browser. Go to your MIDI extension device and drag your exported MIDI clip over into the MIDI box. And now when you press the button, your MIDI clip will play live. This makes it easier to create complex effects with a lot less effort required. In case your song uses a different BPM, this new tempo box should always be equal to your BPM and then you can make adjustments to it to make it slower or faster. However, I do not recommend doing this because you have much more precise control by using the time stretching feature of the Ableton MIDI clip editor. This way, I can make my clip exactly as short or as long as I want. When you're finished with your project and want to take a break, saving the project is not enough. You also have to save the MIDI extension states into a save file of its own. Go to your master device and click on save. Navigate to the same folder you were in and name your save file for the project. After you save that, all of the MIDI extension states are going to be saved into a file in the MIDIX folder. When you reload your project, you will notice that the MIDI extensions have the light effects missing. In order to bring them back, click load and then load your save file. And now your light effects are going to work again. The whole save file system and having to keep your light effects outside of your project folder can really be a hassle to do, especially when sharing your project file. The collect all and save feature of Ableton is now not enough. You also have to share the lights folder and any person that wants to play your project also must have the MIDI extension installed inside of their user library. Another plugin that plays back MIDI files is called Launchpad Lights Midifier. It offers many improvements compared to MIDIX, the most important of which being the ability to keep your light effects inside of the project folder, which also enables easy sharing with the collect all and save feature of Ableton. This actually means that the person who's playing your project does not have to have MIDIFIER installed in order to play your project properly. Once you've downloaded a MIDIFIER, you can drag it into your user library, so it's always accessible from Ableton. However, I recommend you collect it inside of your project folder as soon as you use it in your project. That way, the device will immediately be saved inside of the project folder. And from now on, you can use this instance to create light effects that stick around with your project. To keep your light effects, I generally like to create a new folder inside of my project folder and keep all of my MIDI files inside of that folder. I'm now going to re-export my light effect inside of the lights folder inside of my project folder. To load a MIDI clip into MIDIFIRE, simply drag the file over onto the device. Now before using MIDIFIRE, we have to go through some setup. The first thing you'll notice is that the MIDI effect does not play immediately when you press the button it is assigned to. This is because MIDIFIRE actually has multiple ways of starting your light effect, which you should configure for every single light effect you make. 
This can be configured on the start panel. The bypass option allows you to traditionally select your note via the chain key of your MIDI effect track and trigger your light effect that way. The button option relies on your key zone being fully stretched out, so MIDIFIER has access to all of the buttons that are being pressed on the launch pad. From there, click the set button and then press the note you want to assign your light effect to. An advantage of using this approach compared to the traditional one is that you can actually map your light effects to the four top buttons. These buttons send a special type of message called CCs, and you normally cannot map a light effect to these in the MIDI effect track. There is also the option to trigger upon a chain being received, however I will talk about that later as it'll make more sense later on. MIDIFIRE supports a couple different play modes. Trigger is the classic play mode. Tap your button once and your light effect plays once. Gate will play your light effect while you're holding the button down. The moment you release it, the light effect disappears. The toggle mode will play your light effect until you press the button again. You can combine any of these modes with loop, which will constantly loop your light effect until it is stopped. For playback speed, using a 100% playback speed is always going to keep your MIDI clip at 120 BPM. To use a BPM other than that, you must calculate the percentage difference between 120 BPM and 150 BPM. This is easiest done by dividing your BPM with 120 and then multiplying it with 100. This should sync my effect up with 150 BPM. Using the real-time option will attempt to sync up the internal MIDI player with live's internal clock. However, due to the ticking feature being slightly buggy, I recommend against using this setting. The stop option allows us to choose a second note which we can use to directly stop our light effect. So if I start my light effect here, I can stop it there. When I stop my light effect, I can send a chain message to a specified index. This can be used to communicate to a second instance of MIDI fire. For example, I'll use the same effect, but I'll give it some different colors here. And I'll export it as number two. Let's create a second instance of MIDI fire for it. Let's load it up here. And instead of using a button, we will set it to trigger when a chain of one is received. So now when I stop the first effect, the second effect will chain onto it and trigger itself. Another new feature is the ability to remix your colors. With this feature, I could have simply reused the first effect instead of making a second one. When you load a MIDI effect, you'll notice that the Get Colors in MIDI Clip option is automatically selected. The first time you play your MIDI effect, the colors will be analyzed and loaded into the Remix Colors panel. Now, you can make the remixing active and then change your colors to any desired values. You want to map the velocity 1 to a different velocity, say 47. You want to map 2 to 46 and you want to map 3 to 45. And now when I play this effect, it's going to have a blue color instead of a white color. If I wanted to apply the same effect to a lot of different modifier instances, I could save the current remix configuration to a file and then load it in a second instance. To get color previews that fit the Launchpad S instead of the Launchpad Pro, you can click this button and the previews will switch around. And most importantly, if we reload the project, our light effects are already loaded and ready for playback. MIDIFIRE is a huge improvement over MIDIX just because of the features it has and managing to eliminate the hassle of saving and loading. However, it is not without its issues as well. Because of so much additional functionality, MIDIFIRE is actually a quite large plugin and using it a lot throughout your project is going to waste a lot of your computer's resources, mainly the working process memory. This is where a compromise has to be made. You will either use MIDIX, which has the hassle of loading and saving, or you would use MIDIFIRE, which has the hassle of loading your projects with unnecessary features. The features it brings are great, however, they are usually only applicable in specific scenarios, and you're definitely not going to be using all of these all the time. Using either of these devices is definitely going to speed up your workflow and allow you to create more complex effects much easier. If you have any questions about this, please write them in the comments and I'll answer as soon as I can. Thank you for watching, bye.